Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Uh, this evening I'm going to be doing a review. Now this is going to be something a little bit different. Not only is it a non-horror film, it's also a trilogy. So these are three films that are really well known. They're Swedish, so Swedish language, English subs. They are based on bestsellers, so I haven't read the books, but if you guys have read the books and you wanted to compare them to the films, then please feel free to tell me what you thought of them. But for me, I can only comment on the films. So as I said, they're a trilogy and they are Swedish and they're known as the Millennium Trilogy. Now they were all made in 2009 and the first one to get the ball rolling is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, directed by Niels Arden Opleff. And the second one, which is directed by Daniel Alfredson, is called The Girl Who Played With Fire. And then the third one to conclude the series, which is also directed by Daniel Alfredson, is The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. Now I'm going to give a very brief description of each film. I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, basically the whole trilogy is based around the Millennium Magazine. Now the Millennium Magazine is a very controversial magazine because it exposes um, things that are very... Um, touchy, um, that can really ruin corporations. So the first one, Mikhail Blomqvist, who is the best reporter for this magazine, is in a lot of trouble. I'm not going to give away why, that's something you're going to have to find out for yourself, but he ends up having to stand down from the magazine for a while. Now while he's uh, been stood down, he is approached by this head of a very, very powerful family. Now, because Mikhail Blomqvist has a reputation as being a very, very good investigative reporter, the head of this family offers him a large sum of money as an incentive to investigate a disappearance of a family member 40 years ago. So something very fishy is going on with this disappearance, and the head of this family believes that this girl was murdered. So Mikhail has now got the task of going into this uh, family's history, which is quite disturbing, and find out just what happened to this young woman. Along the way, Mikhail is teamed up with a computer hacker named Lisbeth Zelander. Now, Lisbeth is a very troubled individual, and she has got a very, very troubled background. And along the way, as they're delving uh, further and further into this family mystery, the, um, the history of Lisbeth is starting to come out as well. So um, that's as far as I'm going to go synopsis on the first one. And then we've got the last two films. Now these really centre around the character of Lisbeth. The second one, Lisbeth is framed for a triple murder. Now Mikhail Blomqvist is also in this one and he doesn't believe she murdered them and he is going to great lengths to prove her innocence before, you know, um, if the law doesn't get to Lisbeth, the people who want the truth to be hidden uh, will get to her. So Mikhail has a lot uh, on, his, on his plate in order to get Lisbeth out of this one unscathed. And then the third one, Lisbeth is on trial for murder, uh, for attempted murder, sorry, and she has a real possibility of being sent to a mental hospital for the rest of her life. So the people who want Lisbeth locked away have tinkered with the evidence and there is a big conspiracy that surrounds not only the law but a very, very powerful sort of corporation. So this is the thrilling conclusion to the trilogy and so this one really does centre around the court case. So um, yeah, that's as far as I'm going to go with the synopsis of each of these films. I hope I've left enough incentive for you to go out there and see the films for yourself. I'm sorry for the brief description but... For a trilogy, it's very easy to give too much away, so I think the less I say, the better. Now, my thoughts on the film, I'll go through how each one of them were individually, and then I'll go through and tell you what I thought of them as a whole. So the first one we start off, it really did have a high-budget feel, and it was a very well-made film. And the thing I liked about this the most is that it was patient. For a first film in a trilogy, it really does need patience and it needs to build a solid platform for the other two films to um, leap off. And that's exactly what it does. It's a slow-burning sort of film. It's a uh, more subtle film, but at the same time, it is quite disturbing and I thought it was quite thrilling. Now, it's kind of like The Da Vinci Code, that kind of mystery sort of film. It's no gore, 
And it just, you know, as you go further and further in the film, more and more unfolds and the plot thickens. And it just keeps on getting better and better as time goes on. So uh, this is a very dark sort of story and the characters are very, very well um, portrayed. Uh, very good depth to them and, you know, they're very rich characters. Uh, Mikhail Blomquist, he was a, a rich sort of character as well. He had been in a lot of trouble. But the one who steals the show is Lisbeth's character. Um, Mumi Rapace, I think her name is, did a fantastic job. She is, uh, Lisbeth is one of the most fascinating characters I've seen in any film. She just has that much depth to her and she's that disturbed that it was just absolutely fascinating to see her character unfold. So a perfect sort of platform for the other two films to go off. Then we have the second one. Now this one is more of a thrilling film and this one is a little bit more fast paced, which is what the first film allowed it to do. Now you kind of get the setting in the first one and then the second one kind of just kicks up a little bit more. And this one, you know, there are some jump scares in this one and the people, the villains that are introduced in this film are quite scary, especially a blonde-headed villain. Um, he was a massive man and he was really intimidating. So as the film progresses in this one, new characters are introduced into it and, you know, some of them are quite scary. So it delivers, you know, where the first one left off, this one certainly does kick off into another gear and leaves it open for a very thrilling conclusion. Then we have this one, which is basically, as I said, the conclusion, and it wraps all ends together. It ties all the ends, and, you know, it leaves you in a very satisfied mood. Now, this one is more about the court case, and more and more about Lisbeth's history is on the table, and, you know, the more and more you're kind of shocked, and you really want to see something good happen for her, and you're not quite sure if that's going to happen. It's not terribly, you know, predictable. There are some parts that you can kind of predict, but on the whole, I thought this was a very, very satisfying conclusion to what was a very good trilogy. Now, personally, for all three of these films, I rather them over The Da Vinci Code. I just thought they were so different and the characters were just so rich that, you know, it just made for a fantastic trilogy. Uh, there is a lot of violence in it. It's not very graphic. Not much gore in it at all. Um, some of, there's some sexual violence. Uh, what happens to Lisbeth is quite um, horrific. But it doesn't go over the top in anything. It doesn't go over the top in the thrilling elements. It doesn't go over the top in the disturbing elements. It just keeps a very nice pace. It doesn't pretend to be anything that it's not. And it just delivers and it respects the audience, which is what I like about it the most. Uh, these types of films, they're mysteries rather than horror films. And, you know, a good mystery is something that just gets better and better with time. And that's exactly what these three films did. So as far as Scandinavian cinema goes, they have delivered once again with this a fantastic trilogy. Some of the best characters you'll ever come across. Some of the best villains are introduced into it, especially that big blonde guy, as I said. A very, very intimidating character. But the character that steals the show for all three films is Lisbeth. She's just a fascinating character and just one that will command your attention on the screen. And so, you know, the only problem I had with these films is that this one was directed by a different director and had a different budget. The second one had a much cheaper feel, and you'll really notice it straight away. So while it didn't take too long to get used to it, I know a few people will be put off. And it's the same with The Hornet's Nest. These two films didn't quite seem to be as polished as the first one. This one really did seem like a mainstream film, whereas these two seemed like a lower budget almost television movies but that didn't really take anything out of it for me because as I said the story made up for it and I really would have liked it to have the same director throughout the entire um, trilogy but nothing could be done about that if I was going to pick my favorite film of the trilogy I think it's the conclusion I thought you know it's the perfect way to tie up all the loose ends and make everything you know um, become very clear so you know fantastic trilogy I would highly recommend it especially if you're a fan of Scandinavian cinema I know there is a remake from America coming very very soon and I think they stay true to the original films so I'm looking forward to that but before you see the remake I would highly recommend you go out there and check out these ones because you know fantastic and you know by far my best my favorite trilogy so I'm um, definitely definitely recommended that you go out and check out the Millennium Trilogy. Alright guys, uh, that's it. Um, until next time, I'll be doing a horror review very, very soon, so look out for that one. So until then, take care of yourselves, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you later.